and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and Charlotte from Charlotte and the Disney thing World. on your phone? Disney Kingdom. Disney Kingdom. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick something that you love as much as I love books to be your <laughs> brand name what would it be? Food. Cheese? Charlotte and the Cheese. Charlotte and the Cheese. You could do a whole channel on Charlotte mm. and the Cheese. I would watch that. I love mm. cheese. Mm. Um, today I'm joined by my sister Charlotte. This is my sister Charlotte. She's been in a video one video? Well, it was supposed to be two. We filmed another one. <laughs> I deleted the last one. I deleted it. In a, I don't even know why. I think I was getting rid of things on my um, laptop and I was like, don't need that. And then I did. I did need it and I apologise. But we're here today filming, <coughs> excuse me, the finally fall tag. Now, we don't call autumn fall, do we? What do we call oh, it? Oh, autumn. Yeah. <laughs> I did get what you meant by finally fall. I was just nodding along. Yeah, because of autumn. Fall. 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 But I much prefer the word autumn. I actually think it's autumn a nice is a lovely to write. word. I was just about to say it's a nice word to it's write. The M and the N. Yeah. Do you know what else is a nice word to write? Oh, A's. Anything that starts with an A. Daughter. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely. So a and the U. That one. Beautifully, that mm. one. But yes, autumn. So we've got. Although we're, we're right into autumn now, it's almost like let's get started. Very getting excited today. about Christmas. Oh, it's not that cold. But. In comparison to yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday it was 18 degrees. I didn't have a on Charlotte. Um, we have got 10 questions here about autumn and autumn reads and autumn colours and autumn stuff, basically. And Charlotte has answered half of them and I've answered half of them and we're going to work our way through them now. So let's let's just do it. So Charlotte's starting with the first one. And the first question... What's the oh, first question, Charlotte? I don't she know. Does have that written In down. autumn, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. I forgot, I haven't done my homework. I've chosen, and you can see I'm currently reading it again, uh, that Rebecca. Nice, that was a nice bookmark. I one of you, your all-time faves yeah. by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I absolutely love this. I have read it before. We study, we use this a lot at school. Charlotte's for, an English teacher. Yeah, we use it a lot at school for extracts because the description is so... It's beautiful, it is isn't wonderful. it? like, uh, as the flowers here, you know, all the different descriptions. And I was going to pick out a bit, and I'm really sorry, but if I... This, right near the beginning, let me go. Last right night I drove to wait to Mandalay again. That's the one <laughs> where she talks about the gaped windows and the swinging branch of a tree, and it's beautiful. The branches it is beautiful. intermingling, the branches intermingled in a strange embrace. It's All just the way through, lovely. It is beautiful. Vivid setting. If there was mm. a, a dictionary, you can picture and it in, in it. It said vivid setting. I'd look at it, there'd be Mandalay because mm. you actually feel like you're there. But even when they describe when they're in Monte Carlo, even that, I can create that in my head as well. So not it's even very just well Mandalay, done. I think the, the whole part, the whole entire um, description When you've read that, I think you should read My Cousin Rachel. I've got books to read. To She's this. got a backlog already, but you, uh -huh. at some point you should read My no, Cousin Rachel. No, because I like to mix it up, so I like to do this. and then my well, next... So you're never going to read it? No, I am, wait. So I'm reading this, and then I'm going to read, oh, Lucy Nisley. Is it Nisley? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Milk. One, yeah, the one set in Paris. French milk. That next because I like to mix it up. You do. Okay, well, lovely. But that is a very vivid setting. Very good answer. I probably would have picked it myself. Life is bleak. Life is. It is quite bleak, isn't it? In there, even though it's fun. Yeah. Uh, number two is nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So what I thought, I haven't actually got this book here with me because I've lent it to Tom. Um, the Tidal Zone by you Sarah Moss. You should, I was just thinking that. You should have talked. Oh, you've got it. it. I bought it for you, didn't I? Yeah. Um, so it is. It is. Mm. It deals with death in a way where no, it's bleak. It's it, so what happens in the Tidal Zone is, and it's one of my favourite books from last year. I really, really enjoyed it. Look at this hand on my hip. Like I think I'm in charge of everything. <laughs> um, it deals with a young girl um, called Miriam who has an episode at school, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. And she essentially dies for a few minutes. They'll bring her back, um, but they're not sure what's wrong with her. And she spends a lot of time going in and out of hospital, having tests. She's an inpatient for a long time. And you read about it from the dad's perspective. Now, the dad is a stay-at-home dad, which I've never mm -hmm. heard of a book from that perspective before as no, well. Um, so very interesting. But So there's a lot of uncertainty and sort of addressing death and um, not so much grief or loss, but like addressing death. And it was the first book I, so when I heard it described and it was like, oh, we're gonna be, it's a, it's a book that really talks about death a lot. I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna like that. But 
It does in a way that's like... It's really odd. I, I always thought at the beginning, was that, did she actually die? And this is like how they're li- yeah, having her yeah, live Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought of that before. Having, but yeah. Uh, the, that she's almost there, but in spirit rather than yeah. in body. But then there are lots of bits, because I kept thinking something would happen, something would happen, yeah. but it didn't. Yeah, so because aside were from that, that a bit like, mm, not much else like happens. No. But it is a really good mm. um, sort of study on the potential and life the family, and loss the and the yeah. difficulties of family so yeah um, very enjoyable yeah. and I thought that was a good one for me mm. so well done me for picking that well one done. question three is autumn is back to school season share a non-fiction book that taught you something new right so I yeah. think you know I know it's going to be because when I was writing that out I was like I don't think she's ever read any non-fiction apart I have from read non-fiction <laughs> well the only one I could think of that you were going to say is it a year of living day <laughs> yeah um, I absolutely adore, 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 and this is another. This is used in another one of my questions later on. Oh, don't, don't look, look at those. Um, a year of living Danishly. I learned so much. Your hands from, are so cold. I know. Cold hands warm up. Mm-hmm. Um, like on a year of living Danishly, I learned so much from it, and I've recommended it to anybody who will listen. And when when it was when I was listening to it, because I listened to it on your, on your audible, um, in the car, I really enjoyed going away with her and like listening yeah. and, and giving a lot of her advice to other people and saying oh did you know in Denmark they do this did you know in Denmark yeah. they do that did you know in Denmark they do this oh they've got it so right in Denmark so I've written a few bits down but oh the kind of th- things like in first of all mm. you live in Danish is about a woman who I, I talk about this all the time on my channel but mm. it's about a woman who moves to um, a place in Denmark called Jutland um, because her husband gets a job there working for um, Legoland she doesn't speak the language she's never really lived like she's never lived there before they I'm not even in, sure she's even very been there fast before paced London lives yeah and they moved to the complete office and she's a journalist Denmark. isn't she mm. so she moves to there so yeah what's your point right so things like I don't work in London but my husband Stuart does and the the fact the pace of life just gets a bit ridiculous and you just succumb to it and you just become very much samey and or having to squeeze everything in and having to move really quickly so that was something i learned about properly stopping and yeah. enjoy it one of the main things that i really sticks in my mind was at christmas where the whole country has a whole week off yeah and that is something that i think is so important because you don't you know, like Boxing Day sales and things like that. It's yeah. ridiculous now. How oh. it's like an obsession. I was going to suggest we do that on Boxing Day. This oh year. no, thank you. Uh, it's just an obsession to get out. Whereas actually, she said to start with, it was going to be like, oh god, what do we do? But you just stop and properly embrace life. And yeah. Reading things. So that's something I learned. And and things like the enjoying electronic free time. That's something that on the as on the radio as I was on our way over here. Um, again, a study in Denmark was saying how we are far too consumed with going online. I know this is online. <laughs> so turn your computer so off <laughs> and go and play with some wooden yeah. toys. <laughs> but it is true, you know, we should, and I've started to do that at night, and it just you know something I learned a lot from it. Yeah, it and is, I'm going that way. It's very not, good. I'll save it for a question later. I'm going to listen to it again next month. It's non fiction oh. November. Why did you want to listen to it? We can't. Well, I'll wait till December. Something I've s- recently thought about in terms of um, electronics is I read this such a simple tip because I always go on my phone before I go to bed. It's literally yeah. the last it, thing I do. Did you do. No. Oh. It was to do with bullet journaling. Oh. The last thing I do before I go to bed is go on my phone, whether it be... I do my kingdom. To, I, oh, <laughs> Charlotte does her Disney kingdom. But like to set, oh, even to set my alarm, well, what they said is, why don't you set your alarm earlier on in the day and then you don't have to go to hmm. your phone in bed? Do you not have your alarm just on repeat? No, I don't. Oh, okay. But I should do, really. Um, Davina McCall, one of her things was, a huge thing that she's doing at the moment is just about life and um, and bits like that. And one of her main advice tips, which was on Facebook the other week, interestingly, was about not going to bed with your phone. And even she was saying, people say, oh, well, I've got to charge it up, which I say. Mm. Oh, I use it for my alarm. She said, you need to get something completely separate. Yeah. I'm so going to get an alarm. Out of the way. Like, think of the last time you actually turned your phone off. Yeah, because it weren't working. Yeah, exactly. We, you know that, and that's something that I think is coming out in a lot of things now. But definitely, the start of all my thinking about how I deal with life was from a year listening to a year of yeah. living Danishly. Very good, very very good. Love also, it. just while we're talking about living Danishly, hi everyone. I really feel like you would enjoy this. This is Names for the Sea by Sarah Moss, who wrote Tidal Zone. I'm reading it at the moment. Okay. Her and her family signed coffee. Oh yeah. Um, her and her um, family moved to Iceland. It's not as oh. accessible as a year of living Danishly, and it doesn't talk. It doesn't talk with as much love, and it doesn't make you want to pick I up do, and I move love, to I'm, Denmark. Yeah, it, 
but no, it's it really not that. It's beautifully it's written and, mm. and really, I really interesting. Want to go to Iceland as well, so that will be. I'll you can thinking. borrow it from me. I'll add that to the. Ever but, um, it's very very good, and I always. If people have enjoyed a year of living Danishly, I always think Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland is another good well, one. Well, one of my friends who watches your channel a lot, yeah. she um, asked me what other ones I would I would recommend, and she's just finished a year of living Danishly mm. and adored it. So there we go, Emma. Names for the Sea. Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland. Right, anyway, blah, 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 Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. Yeah. Next question <laughs> is, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with the people we love. Name a fictional family or household or a friend group oh. that you would love to be part of. And I picked the Weasleys. Yeah. Just that because, has. yeah, they're so, like, they, they just seem to have a very good way with each other, mm. don't they? They all get on very well. Have they a laugh. have, like, little sibling spats, but it's all lovely and they all deeply care for each other. There's mm. always food around there. It's cozy. All that magic. I love magic, coziness, food. Ron's, I fancy him a bit. I wouldn't want to be, like, going out of him if he was my brother. <laughs> but. <laughs> As an outsider, I feel like I'd like to spend some time with them. And mm. I just feel like it's cosy. They've just, they've just got everything that I'd be interested Lots of in. Lots at the Not Weasley household. Oh, Fred and George would be a bit too much banter to me, Fred and George. I'd have to like, take a bit of time out. But very enjoyable, <laughs> lovely time. And then when the big brothers come home, you can get all like, oh, because I think I quite like them. <laughs> what, you know, Not Percy. No. I can't think of his name. Bill Stop. and Charlie. Bill, mm. Bill, Bill and Charlie. What, his earring. And Charlie works with the um, dragon. I think I mean Charlie then, I don't mean Bill. Don't they both work with dragons? No. Bill works for the Ministry of Magic. Uh, sorry, he doesn't. He works with Green Dots and he works going into the pyramids and stuff. Okay. And Charlie works with the dragons. That's interesting though. Isn't aren't it? they a good family? They've just they got are. so much going on. Mm. And they're just very real people, aren't yeah. they? Down to earth. Down to earth, yeah. That, that's who I would like to spend uh, some time with. Next question for Charlotte is, the colourful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of autumnal coloured yeah, spines. Well, she's just using gone. the ones she's actually well, got. Well, I, as I had these on my dressing table, I did, they're not. That is, there. that is. These aren't. That, that definitely is. I Maybe feel, not this one so much. I don't feel like black I is. I thought this. These I don't care. Too. I'm going to show you. So, this wasn't even my question, but I had these, these are in my autumn display at the back at the beautiful. moment. And they're, these are the penguin oh, cross down classics. <laughs> Penguin Cloth Bound Classics, and I just, I've got quite a few of these. Charlotte, my sister, and um, David's mum always get me one of these for my birthday and Christmas, um, and I'm sort of collecting them. I've got quite a good collection now, mm. but I just left, left these ones out for the month because they're autumnal. So I've got, um, I'll show you, this one is particularly beautiful. Okay. Far From the Magic Crowd I, by Thomas Hardy. I think I, I got you that. No, I don't think, I think David's mum got me that. There was one that I didn't, I hadn't heard of the story, but I just liked the cover. Um, Lady Chattersley's Lover, which David's mum also got you. me. Little Women That You I Did, did get, get Me. And I've read that, you can tell I've read that because yeah. they're coming off, the uh, the scissors are coming off a bit. And Pride and Prejudice, actually Emma got me this yeah, one. Yeah, I didn't get you that because um, she got you tickets to see did. it as well. She got me tickets to see it, so she got me that for my 30th. Very but nice. yeah, these are very good autumnal spines and covers. Yes. So yeah. Sorry. Even though that, that I hijacked that question, even Sorry. though it wasn't mine. But the next question is my question, and it's, Fall is the perfect time for storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein someone is telling a story. So I thought I'd share two, because they're both books that I've read this month. And the first one is another Penguin Cloth Bound classic, Wuthering Heights. Um, so within this, Nellie Dean is telling the story of Heathcliff and Cathy. And yeah, I mean, I, read, I, I like to read this every year, but this year, I, I don't think I'm going to read it again. I have tried and tried and tried to read Wuthering Heights and some of the girls at school absolutely adore it and I am I used to again. love it I am but you know what again. I don't like it now I feel like it's like YA it's like annoying whiny people that are in love with each other and I'm not really into that genre genre gothic again like Victorian -y. but yeah it was um I reread it this year but it is a story within a story and then the one that I'm I listening think I mean to Victorian do I I think you mean gothic. Yeah, but it's it's different. Goth mm. Dif gothic. Different. Gothic genre, different gothic. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm listening to the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows at the moment, and within that, I've just gone past the part where um, Hermione is reading aloud the, uh, the the Towers of Beedle the Bard, so the um. three brothers, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do this without mentioning it because they're both ones that I've uh, read recently. So yeah, those were guys. And then the next question is for Charlotte, and she said the nights are getting. She said, she said. And the question is, the nights are getting darker. Share a dark and creepy read. 
Well, you're not much of a dark and creepy no, girl, are you? this is as far as I go, so I love the rock. I mean, there is some pretty creepy shit in there, so... I'm going to reveal it in a moment. Well, don't so, reveal it, because people no, love it. So I absolutely adore the Robert Galbraith, so the um, pseudonym of J.K. Rowling. Um, Rowling? Rowling. Rowling. Rowling, Rowling. Um, absolutely love them. I think the... The first one was really good, eased you in gently. The second one was weird, but you couldn't, I couldn't stop reading it. A couple of Yeah, it wasn't the best one, it, was it? But it was, it was really weird and I quite enjoyed that. This one, oh my God. That's the best one so, so far. So it was one where I was reading it like this at one o'clock in the morning, like, oh my God, because I had to finish it. I had to find out who the murderer was. Um, Did it, you, everyone and I read, not a bit, I, I have no idea. No, I, I was... Toying between two, toying between two, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and then I kept saying to Stuart, who hasn't read it, but I'd just like to air my ideas. So I'm sure it's him, I'm sure it's him. And it was completely the other person. It's every single one I've read. I've never it even had an inkling. Tense, absolute, but also makes me think that she's a little bit weird with the ideas that she's Imagine got. Imagine she would have to do some pretty shit like, research There's into things. Some, this book in particular. But yeah, I really enjoy them. This, I know they sort of they. Do this one is very true to the kind of things that have happened as well, because the um, the silkworm. If anyone's seen it as well, because there there have been adaptations on. Was it BBC or was that on yeah. Channel Four? BBC that were really good. Really, really good. Um, that that one was a bit twisted and weird. But this one, it's like it. Um, I hope they do this one great? over three three. Um, it's like different women keep being killed off, isn't it? Yeah. And being found in really horrific ways. Um, and a lot to do with like sort of prostitution and different body things like that. Body dysmorphia. Yeah. And, so um, um, the disorder really I can't think of when people. Um, I don't actually know the, the name of it, but where people are sexually attracted to people who have lost a limb. Oh right. And mm. that that girl who thinks she's disabled, uh, she believes she's disabled, yeah. but she's not, and things. Yeah. So there must there's some like hardcore research that's mm. gone into this, but yeah, it is I really mean, it is definitely a career of evil. It is creepy as well. Mm. But I, um, so she's writing another three or f I think I know she's I, writing some I don't more. think she's capped herself. I think she's just said the next one they've got the oh, okay. title out for it is called um, Lethal White. So mm. that makes me think it might be to do with drugs. Oh, okay. Um, mm. she, but the others haven't been. I can't remember any oh. drugs. Um, but I, but yeah. when I was watching, when I finished watching the Silkworm, the adaptation on the BBC was really really, really good. Yeah. I was a bit. I didn't. I never thought they'd ruin it, but when they showed who was playing Strike, I was like, he's too young, he's too young, but he's not, he's amazing, he's, he's really, really, really good. good. Um, and I said to David, just the as the credits were really rolling, Robin yeah, well. and it's I a different Robin to the kind of one I picture in my oh, head. Oh no, I imagined that to be exactly like she would be. Yeah, I like her. But when, it was, when the credits were rolling on the last one, I said to David, oh, wouldn't it be awful? Because it was on about four or five weeks ago. Mm. I said to David, oh, wouldn't it be awful if they said, oh, and Strike won't return until Christmas? And then they were like, and I got a phone call in the middle of that question, so we don't know how far we got with it, but we're done. Basically, that's scary. a creepy book. <laughs> scary, scary book. The next one is for me. It is the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up someone's cold and rainy day. Aww. And I've picked this because it's amazing. This is Franklin's Fine Bookshop by Jen Campbell, um, illustrated by Katie Harnett. It is a beautiful story, and I really want you to read this. I think mm. you'll really love it. The illustrations are the story is beautiful. The bonus is that the illustrations are amazing too, and it's a lovely, lovely heartwarming story about acceptance and Aww. friendship and just joy and beautiful. it won't take you long it's beautiful this. it's very autumnal like the the um the copper mm. is very very autumnal anyway and yeah there's just something about it that just really it's really nostalgic and fun and lovely and i feel like it would warm anyone's heart um so yeah i think you should you should like that and, and i feel like the, the illustrations are really autumnal and beautiful too there's a lot of i love luna's red hair she has got the beautiful beautiful so yeah definitely that charlotte your last question is yeah. autumn returns every year name an old favorite that you'd love to return right, well, to I've soon i've got three okay um because i was so i originally went straight away with year of living danishly because i drive to work in the dark drive home from work in the dark oh, it's miserable, and i get it? a bit miserable and i'm i'm stopping that i'm not thinking of the problem anymore i'm thinking of the solution so the solution is that I'm going I'm to... I'm quitting the job and I'm moving <laughs> to California. <laughs> and done. That's the reveal. Um, so I'm thinking, driving home, listening to that, I think yeah. it's going to be really lovely. Obviously, I'll have to wait now until December, but you'll get through that in November. I'll listen to it first so that it, you'll yeah. have it by I'll midway through. Course. So thank you. But in addition to that, I absolutely adore... This is my all-time phase. It's not a cheery book, though, Charlotte. No, but Neither so of them. 
Good, and I love making comparisons to now as well, in particular with George Orwell. I reread this recently and I really, really enjoyed it. So I recommend any students that always want to go a bit further and, and a bit deeper, I always recommend this and then this. Yeah. And I think these are accessible for both genders as well, definitely, and I've, and I've really pushed that as well. And we study how it's how a, as an A-level text. But 1984, I just, this, this version I got off of eBay because we, I think I lent out the other one and... and it never came back. Which Hopefully, it was a very upset. Was it me that borrowed it? Was it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But <laughs> somewhat, we lent it years ago. But so, 1984 was a book. I can't even remember how I got into reading it. I was. It wasn't a university textbook. I think that somebody recommended. I, I think read it's it. a. It's a very popular like. Oh, I'm an adult bit, now. Yeah, look I will read yeah. it. So I think I read it after my A levels and just absolutely adored it thank you even so that like clever. really long bit in the middle where he's reading out that book though <laughs> yeah there are some bits that bit long. but i just love how it was written so long ago and yet it's it's yeah. so apt now and i really love making comparisons to that and then obviously the handmaid's tale is i love margaret atwood so much yeah. and i love how clever she is with her stories um one of my favorite is the edible woman but i really do love the handmaid's tale as well um, that you can tell I've read this one a lot. It's all a bit bent and etc. It is very good. So I think, I'd... yeah, I'm going to read those one after the other. Have you seen the um, TV adaptation of that? I started watching it, but it's one of those things where it's recorded, like the whole series is recorded, but we're really bad at just sitting down mm. and watching them. Apparently so it's pretty graphic. It, the first one was, I've only I seen, the seen it. I haven't seen it, I was a bit it. like, oh, Christ almighty. Yeah. But it's true, you know, that's how, that's the image that she paints. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to listen to the Year of Living Danishly and I'd like to reread these. And let's get you something a bit cheery as well. Well, that's why I thought, I don't know when to read. Let's get you something a little bit cheerier <laughs> than those. Uh, okay, so the last question is... Shopaholic, yeah. Shopaholic, <laughs> Shopaholic abroad. Um, autumn is the perfect time for cosy reading night. Share your favourite cosy reading accessories. So as you may all know, I host a cosy reading night. Every time I involve things like blankets, candles, candles tea, warm clothes, Snacks. nice lighting, snacks, cat, and somewhere where you can stretch out. Mm. Those are my perfect cosy reading night accessories. So yeah, so thanks for joining me for this lovely uh, video. I'll You're try welcome. not to delete it this time. Yeah, um, I'm hoping actually to put it up tomorrow, imagine. Straight away. Mm. Have you had a lovely time? Do you like being on here? I have, yeah, it is lovely. And now we're gonna have big crumpets with Marmite, and tea, and milky bar milky ghosts. Milky bar ghosts, because Charlotte's just bought us milky bar ghosts. Mm. So it's very exciting. So yes, thank you so much for watching everyone. I haven't tagged anyone because I feel like we're probably a bit late into autumn now. But if you do feel like doing this, it's very enjoyable questions. Makes you think, doesn't it, Charlotte? It does. Makes you think. Well, I wasn't ready for my next read, so I am now. No, she's ready. Yeah, she's she's ready. showing them like... <laughs> like a professional. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all again soon. Thanks!